Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the photos. Uh, what I'm going to do here at this, uh, what I call the photo thoughts section, is change things up a little bit. And I want to share what I'm going to do, and you can decide how much of this you want to watch. So the first thing I'm going to do back here is uh, talk a little bit about the, the tech side of things, the gear I used. Uh, second thing I want to do is remind you, uh, these photos are on Flickr. You can take a look at those at the link down below. Third thing I'd like to do is uh, a little kind of behind the scenes secret about making these videos that you may not know about, and I'll connect that to photos even. The fourth thing I'm going to do is share a, a YouTube channel uh, that I like quite a bit that inspires me, and uh, there's some things in there I want to try next time I go out to Bellevue. Uh, and then the, the fifth thing I have is a question for you. So make sure you stay tuned till the end. This won't take too long. So first, starting off with the gear. Uh, it's the usual suspects for this. It's the X-H2S, uh, the Fujinon XF 16 to 80 millimeter F4, and the XF 70 to 300 F4 to 5.6. So kind of the usual zoom lenses I take when I go to the city in the day. It's different at night. As I mentioned, these photos are also on Flickr if you'd like to look at them larger and at your own pace. Uh, so those, uh, that link is down below in the, the uh, description below. Now, can I share a secret with you? Not everybody knows this, so I'm trusting you. Here's the secret, well, it's not a secret. It's, it's just a fact of life of making these videos. Often the most time-consuming part of creating these videos for me, the single most time-consuming component is finding the music. Uh, I know that sounds like it shouldn't be the case, but it is. Uh, finding just the right song. I have an idea, just generally kind of a vibe when I'm looking for music. Uh, I use artlist.io. I'll leave a link for that down below as well. It's royalty free. Uh, you pay yearly for a subscription. It's got lots of cool stuff and really great music that I really like. Um, and my process in finding music I realize is a lot like when I'm out looking for photos. I kind of have an idea in mind. Uh, and then I'm also, uh, so I try and restrict myself a little bit. So give myself a framework to be in. Like I'll go to a location during a time of day and plan out a route. That's kind of a, the framework. For finding a song, I kind of have a vibe in mind. And when I'm searching, what I do is exclude some genres that I know I'm not really interested in or don't fit the thing I'm looking for. It still leaves a whole lot of possibilities. And for finding this song uh, for this video today, it took me at least two and a half or three hours uh, of just sifting through all sorts of things. And again, an analogy, a metaphor for photography, you see the, the wavelength and you can see the genre of the song. You kind of get a sense of what it might sound like. It's like when you're out looking at photos. Oh, I, the sun's like this and I know what this location is going to do. But when you get there, you hit the play button. It's a little different. There's always a surprise. Sometimes a surprise, you're like, oh, I thought this would be different than it is. And sometimes a surprise, ooh, this is exactly what I wanted. So it took a while to find this song, but I, I think it fits the vibe of what I was looking for. It was a pleasant surprise, just like uh, some of these photos were a pleasant surprise. Uh, <laughs> I have an embarrassingly large number of photos of that uh, hose, that tube, that pipe, whatever, that flexi tube sticking out of the, the building, that one building with all the windows and steel and glass. Because uh, I, I just saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, that's something different. And I made photographs from a whole bunch of different angles. Another surprise, and, and I've noticed this before, uh, and maybe there's a whole series in this, and I remember a photographer named Zach Arias did a series on this a while back. He called it hashtag D, I think it was just the letter D, Vice, V-I-C-E, or maybe it was D-E, colon, Vice, the, the vice of our phones. And uh, everybody's on their phones. The construction workers are on their phones. They're up on the crane on the phone. Uh, so maybe that's why everything takes longer to get completed. I don't know. But everybody's on their phones. So, so that's a little secret about how hard it is to find music for this, these videos, but I really enjoy the process. I hope uh, you enjoy the music. I hope it kind of fits the vibe of uh, the, the photos for you and uh, adds to it, and there you go. So uh, next, what I want to do is share a resource with you, which is, and I'm going to do this uh, one, one a week, uh, each of the times I do a street photography video, is share a YouTube channel of another street photographer that I like, that inspires me. And this one today is a street photographer from Boston named Faisal Westcott. If you follow street photographers on YouTube, you probably already follow him. If you don't, 
go follow him. Uh, Faisal's most recent video as of the time of this recording in February of 2022, 23, excuse me, uh, is a day of photography in New York. And he has a whole bunch of photos like this, uh, little vignettes, a uh, framing. Uh, there's a whole bunch of photos of, um, of just hands or feet, again, framed fragments of people. And it's really interesting. And it got me thinking that uh, one of the ways I like to photograph people on the street is to keep them as anonymous as possible, uh, just to respect their privacy. So one way to do that would be if you don't have the whole person in the photo, it's pretty hard to tell who it is. So uh, I'll be thinking about that, thinking about framing and some other some of the other cool things he did in that video. So I'll leave a link to his channel down below. Faisal Westcott, give him a try. Uh, he's got lots of uh, really interesting uh, perspectives on street photography. I really like his approach. Uh, his narration is very quiet. He's a much quieter person than I am. But uh, yeah, so give Faisal a try. Stay tuned to next time I do a street photography video, I'll share another street photography YouTube channel. And speaking of that, if you have any YouTube channels you love of other street photographers, uh, if you'd share them in the comments below, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. And the last, as promised, I have a couple questions for you. So the question I have for you is, and uh, the best way to answer this is in the comments below, is I've had a number of people ask me questions in uh, recent videos about how I edit the photos in Lightroom. Am I using uh, Fuji recipes in camera? Am I using presets? Um, well, how am I doing things? Uh, so my question to you is, first one, are you interested in a Lightroom process video? So that's question one. Question two, how much do you want to see? Do you want to see from import and my organization process all the way through rating and then the edit and then export? Or you just want to see the, uh, the edit part, the develop module in Lightroom? So let me know what you think. I'd really appreciate comment and feedback on that in the comments below. So that concludes the photo thoughts that accompany this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any thoughts or feedback on the photos or this whole video, uh, as always, leave a comment down below. I really appreciate that and enjoy conversations with you. Uh, until I see you in a future video, which will be coming up next week, as far as I know, if you click the play next week or, you know, who knows when you're watching the next video. Anyway, uh, until I see you then, stay safe, stay well, and have fun creating photos. Bye for now.